You're listening to the voice of T.K. Coleman, and this is another episode of T.K.'s Two Cents. Today, we're going to talk briefly about dealing with vampires and burnout. Let's dive right in with tweet number one. People love having a fall guy. It feels good to not be the scapegoat that's attacked by a bloodthirsty mob. Be careful, though. It's almost impossible to party with vampires without becoming one yourself. I once heard it said that the devil always eats its own. It can be fun to party with the devil, to hang out with the devil, to be side by side with the devil as long as the devil is focusing on someone other than you. But eventually, inevitably, the devil will always turn its attention toward you and eat you too because the devil knows no loyalty. You ever been to a stand-up concert, watch a stand-up comedian? One of the things that they often do is when they start the show, they look out in the audience at the first two rows and they say, who do we have in the house tonight? And they look for someone that they can kind of pick on or make fun of or get everyone to laugh at. And you know the moment when it's happening, when that comedian is looking around, you're holding your breath, you're feeling really scared, you're really tense and nervous. And then the moment they pick someone and it's not you, you breathe a sigh of relief and it's all fun and games, right? Because they're making fun of someone other than you. And it's funny. You know, I once heard it said that uh, tragedy is when I cut my finger. Comedy is when someone else falls into an open sewer and dies. It's always funny when it happens to someone else, but it's a tragedy when the smallest little thing happens to us. I think there's a lesson here about cancel culture. It can be so easy when you see someone who's an icon, someone richer than you, prettier than you, more famous than you, more liked than you, get called out for something that they said or some mistake that they committed 10 years ago. It can be so easy to jump on that bandwagon and say, yay, bring them down. Ha ha ha. It's so funny. Look what happened to that person. I just want you to remember, however, that for the most part, when people get canceled, Sure, there may be something that they really said or really did that warrants being called out. But in many of these cases, the people that are canceling them, they're not doing it out of some unconditional loyalty to morality and virtue. They're doing it because they're bloodthirsty and they enjoy that sensation of watching someone else fall. And you better believe it. If those same people had the chance, the opportunity, the motive to do the same thing for you, They would come for you gladly without any loyalty. There's nobody that's ever going to say with you, hey, you were part of my cancellation party when I jeered at the downfall of someone else. Therefore, I will grant you immunity and never turn my back on you. The devil always eats its own. From the people who do the canceling to the people who celebrate at the cancellation, every human being has imperfection. Every human being has weakness. And vampires will be glad and happy to enjoy watching you suffer and squirm because of some failure. I don't know why it is, but there are people in this world that enjoy watching other people squirm. I wouldn't party with those people because it's quite likely that you'll become one of them in the process. And more importantly, those people will turn on you anyway. The the devil always eats its own. Don't party with the devil. Never works out. Let's go to tweet number two. Resting isn't just about taking a break from work. It's also about finding the work that gives you energy. One of my favorite quotes is, ask not yourself what the world needs, but rather what makes you come alive, for that is what the world needs, people who have come alive. That's from Howard Thurman. Your job in life is to discover and do the work that makes you come alive. But work has a very bad reputation. People talk about work as if it's a form of slavery. People talk about work as if it's something that we have to do. People talk about work in a manner that's resentful. And that's because many of us have never been taught how to find what we love or how to treat our preferences and our priorities as something that can be integrated with our work. Most of us have never been taught how to look at our gifts and look at our talents and figure out ways that we can create value in the marketplace for others, thereby creating wealth in our own lives. And so we just do what we told. We just do what we're told. We go to school, we follow the instructions, and we carry that permission-based mindset out into the real world. 
and we go to our jobs and we look forward to the weekends where we don't have to work and all of the other days are the days that we have to work. But as Seth Godin said, instead of spending your entire life wondering when the next vacation will be, maybe it's time to give yourself permission to create a life that you don't need to escape from. You have that permission. You have that power. You can't get there overnight, but you can get there with a little bit of commitment. Don't work Monday through Friday and treat Saturday and Sunday as your only days of freedom. You can make your whole life free, not by escaping work, but by learning how to bring a sense of agency and artistry to your work. Know that it's possible. All right, everybody. Those are my two. My, those are my two cents for the day. That's how you deal with vampires and deal with burnout. For those that are listening on the podcast, I'm frozen here. For those that are listening on the podcast, feel free to subscribe and leave a comment. If you're watching on YouTube, feel free to hit that like button, subscribe, leave a comment on any topic you'd like to hear me talk about, and also don't hesitate to share with the family member or friend. Thanks for tuning in to TK's Two Cents. Peace.